Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to start our playthrough of Wander the Cult of Barnacle Bay. We're doing scenario 1.5b. Now if you'd like to see how I set up this game, check out the video before this in the playlist. Otherwise, let's hang out here and we'll start with our playthrough. Looking at our initiative track, we can see that Finn will go first, followed by Abexis. We can see here their benefits are Finn gets plus one on his defense roll, and Ibexis will get plus one to his attack. Here are the lists of the actions that you can take on your turn. When you start the game, you can do two actions a turn, and you can do multiple of the same actions during your turn. You can move, that's moving two spaces. You can attack, you can interact, you can ready equipment, you can trade equipment, you can drop items or tokens, you can step up or fall back. Most of that is self-explanatory except for the move up or fall back. So if I would like, I can take Finn's whole turn and move him to the bottom, whoops, <laughs> to the bottom of the initiative track. That would then mean that if he's in the same space as other heroes, when an enemy goes and if they're the closest, that group of heroes, they will then target the one that's highest up on the initiative track. So they wouldn't target Finn. But I think I'm going to take the chance with Finn because he has a chance of taking on that brute and maybe taking him out. It's important to note that the Brute has additional movement this round. He doesn't have additional defense. So right now his defense is only two. The first thing I'd like to do with Finn is do a range attack on this Brute. Now in order to do a range attack, I need to have a clear shot. A clear shot represents an unobstructed view of an enemy in a straight line. So it's always in straight lines that you're gonna attack in this game. Range attacks have unlimited range as long as nothing blocks the field of view of that straight line. Full spaces, so spaces with four characters that includes heroes or enemies, uh, red lines, wall tokens, or darkness tiles will block that field of view. So for an example, if this was right here instead of where it is right over here, that would block our line of sight. We wouldn't be able to see these enemies. We can see here the Brute has a total of five health with two armor. He is going to attack with his, with his throwing axes. It's a ranged weapon, so we're looking on these dice for either these symbols or these ones. These ones are the best because they explode, we get to roll more dice. Also, if we get crits, they cause cleave per crit. That means we can choose another enemy in that same space and they get one wound. So we're gonna roll three dice for our first attack. We'll roll them up and that's not a great roll. <laughs> we only have one success. These two have axes or a shield. So they're a failure. So we did one point of damage. He has two shields. Our special ability right now is that we can reduce his shields by one. We just hit a shield for one. So unfortunately, that was a terrible shot. <laughs> so for our second shot, I think instead of going for the brute again, because that did not work, I think instead we're going to go for the archer that's in that same space. The archer is also in a place where they get additional movement. And that's important because they right now have no armor and only two health. If I can take that archer out, that means that my melee characters are free to run up and attack the other guys because the difference in this game, if you are in line of sight of a ranged enemy and you move while you're in that clear shot, so to speak, they get to attack you and you have to do a dodge roll. You just roll your defense, uh, uh, your defense stat and if you get one success, then you're okay. But if you don't, you take a point of damage. And so just think of that. Every time I'm moving, they could keep attacking me. Let's give this another shot. So we're looking for two hits here, hopefully. And we, oh wow, one, two, three. Hey, that is awesome, because that will cleave. So first, let's roll another die in. Okay, that doesn't do anything. We got a total of three hits. That will take out the archer, the archer's toast, because they only had two health. But then we can cleave, because of our throwing axes, another enemy in, our, in that same space. And we're gonna definitely cleave that brute. So we'll place one point of damage there. We also gain one experience. When we get to four experience, we'll level up to level two. Just so you can see here, we are already at the one XP. When we get to four, we get to level two. The big thing is though, we have uh, every time that the first character gets to the new tier level, two things happen. One, everyone else gets one XP. Woohoo, that's the good thing. The bad thing is we have a spawning every time we level up. So we'll have a 1x spawn at the when we level up to level 2. We'll have a 2x spawn at level 3. We'll have a 3x spawn at level 4. And then the huge bad guy, I've never dealt with this, the mega boss comes out if we get to uh, level 5. They don't give you a token to track whose actual turn it is. So I just use one of these tokens. <laughs> so next is going to be Ibexis. He is definitely going to attack because he also attacks range. We'll start out with attacking that brute again. We have a mind rack here. We roll four dice. If we get a critical, it causes confusion per crit. And I'll show you what that means if we get it. So we'll roll four. 
That is great. We have one, two, three successes and a burst, so we get to roll again. Okay, so we have a total of three hits. The Brute has two defense, so he's only going to take one point of damage, but we do confuse him because we did receive a critical. When an enemy model is affected by Confuse, that enemy model attacks another enemy model in the attack range and ignores the target's defense. If there are multiple options for which enemy model the Confuse enemy attacks, it is up to the player to choose the enemy. <laughs> so, you know what's awesome? There's a Grunt in that space, so this Grunt could take two points of damage because of that Brute. Sweet. We have a second action. We can decide if we want to go for that Grunt or maybe go for the Brute again. But I'm thinking I'm going for the Brute. He only has two damage and he has five health. So let's let's try him again. Oh, that's great. We have two hits. And you know what I did forget? Ibexus has an ability he can reroll one die for his spell attacks. So let's reroll this one. Come on, be a crit. No. Well, two hits. You know what that does? It just hits his armor. Doesn't do anything. And you know what? I realized he has plus one to his attack. So I'm going to roll one die for the first hit, the first attack. That would do one additional point of damage. So he has three points of damage out of five. And then we'll roll this again for his second attack. We already had two successes. So if I get a third, yes, that'll do another point of damage. He has four points of damage on him. There we go. Well, we've shot at this poor brute a couple times. He's probably pretty pissed, and he's going to show it. He's going to go next. Normally, enemies can only move one space, but he is in a space with the additional movement, so he's going to move two. This, unfortunately, is a bit of a bummer, because I believe he will move, and he gets to move two spaces. So he's going to move into here. <laughs> These walls are not big enough for him. So he's going to move into this space, and he is going to pretend to try and attack one of us, but he's confused. He's instead going to attack an enemy, but there's no enemy within range, so I believe he just doesn't attack. But I was hoping he was going to take on this grunt. That's not going to happen. Next to go will be our tank. He gets plus one to his shield, so that's not going to help his attack. He does have his stabby dagger. He'll only roll three dice, but he does have pierce. So he only has to get two hits here to actually take him out. Come on, and axes work for him. Great, one, two, three. We just took that brute out. And we can do that because close range is within in your space and within one space away orthogonally. Now, the brute is worth two XP. So our good old tank just gained two XP. This is good and bad because it already puts us close to leveling up. <laughs> For our second action, we can move up to three spaces because of the helm that we have that gives us plus one movement, but I think we're just going to move to here. I don't want to move up any more because if I move up more, these guys will then be engaged because although they cannot attack us diagonally, if we go from corner to corner, pretend this wall just goes to the edge, uh, they would still be able to see us. So then they would be able to activate and all come in and try and attack us. So we're just going to stand behind these walls, let this grunt come up to us during its turn. We can take them out and then we can come around and take these guys out. Speaking of which, the next on the initiative track are the grunts, and the grunts will get plus one attack. So this grunt is simply going to move up. He'll attack our tank for two. These grunts won't move because they are not engaged. They do not see a hero, so they will not move. Once they see a hero, they will become engaged, and then they'll be engaged for the rest of the game until they're de defeated. Tank normally rolls three defense dice. He has his normal two plus the one from his shield, but he's in a location on the initiative track where he gets plus one defense. So he'll roll a total of four dice. Not only that, but his stabby dagger gives him plus one defense reroll. So we can reroll one die. The only successes for defenses are crits and ones that have a shield. So it's a two out of a six chance. So we're going to grab four dice. We're getting attacked for two and damage. And we get one, two. Oh, that is great. Because if you remember, our ability is every time we get a crit on our defense, we do one point of damage to the enemy attacking us. So we've just dealt one point of damage to that grunt. He has three health in total. Okay, that's right. We still, we dealt one point of damage to him. <laughs> and we blocked his two attack. Thank you very much. The archers are next on the initiative track, but none of them are engaged, so they're not going to do anything. And then for Gumbjorn's turn, all he's going to do is do the step up action. What that means is he's going to move himself to the top of the initiative track. After Gumbjorn completes his turn, that will end the round. So then we'll start with the next round, and guess what? Gumbjorn's are right up on top. So he's going to go first. He gets plus one to his defense. Not that helpful when he's attacking. I'm getting the feeling, though, he doesn't really need much help. <laughs> he's going to move into here for his first action. And then his second action is he's going to use his hammer and hammer on this grunt. Remember, you can attack within range one. That's considered close combat. The grunts here have a total of three health and one armor. 
Our grunt is already damaged by one, so we just need a total of three successes to take him out. And we're rolling four beautiful dice. Let's give him a roll. Oh, <laughs> two crits. One, two, three, four. We don't need to keep rolling. That guy is toast. Next to go will be Finn. And unfortunately, Finn is not in the greatest spot to be able to do much of anything. What he's going to do is he's going to move one, two. Then what he's going to do is move one and end his turn here. This way, these archers and the grunt will be able to see him. So they will activate because you can see corner to corner. They can definitely see him, but they're not going to be able to get within range of attacking him. After Finn, it's Ibexus. And Ibexus on the track, you can see here, he's in a space with the foot. So he gets a free movement action. So he's going to move for two for free. That wasn't even an action. He'll then go ahead and spend one action to take a chance and go over here. <laughs> this is risky. He only has three health, but he can do some pretty awesome AOE effects on these guys. So I think, hmm, he, well, or I could have them get confused and attack each other. Yeah, I think I'm going to mind rack these guys. So he's done one movement to move here. And our second action will be to attack. Let's attack the archer. Now, before I do this, I need to remember we did defeat the Brute. So let's take the Brute initiative uh, card off and we slide everybody up. So that's going to tell us, okay, the Grunts are getting additional attack. So I'm actually going to go for the Grunt instead of the Archer because the Archer just gets additional movement. That Grunt is going to attack us for two if we don't kill it. <laughs> and I'm going to need to do four points of damage to it. Whew. Okay, let's see if we can do it. The nice thing is we get to roll four dice and we get one reroll due to our special ability. So we're looking for ranges. Okay, we've got two ranges. That's not going to be enough to take them out. We do get one reroll. Come on, crit. Come on, crit. Oh, that's, that's still good. Man, that would have taken out the archer. But no, that means we did three points of damage minus one defense. We did a total of two points of damage to that grunt, but that grunt was not taken out. This could be bad. I might have, uh, I might have stretched it a little too much. We might be okay, though, because Tank is going to go next, and he can run over there and try and help Ibexus. For his first action, he'll move one, two into this space, and then he's going to go ahead and attack that Grunt. The Stabby Dagger has Pierce 1, so we just need one success here. Definitely got it. So that's going to take out... <laughs> good thing we only needed one. That's going to take out that Grunt, and that means... Oh boy, Tank has three XP. One more and he gets to level two. Now, I'm not entirely sure about this, but I believe since there's still grunts on the board, even though they're not going to activate because they don't have line of sight, we still keep them on the initiative board. So grunts are here. They're not going to go. No one can activate. We'll then go ahead and move to the archers. I'm saying that because the grunts do not have line of sight without going through a darkness tile. So this darkness tile here blocks line of sight. Now, I've got some bad news for you guys. <laughs> the archers are going to go next. These archers are going to move to here. And this archer is here, and they're all going to attack, yes, Ibexus. <laughs> I was not smart. He has three health, you guys. So this one will first attack him for one, but then those two together will attack him for two. The only good thing for us is that uh, they don't have the plus one damage like the grunts did. <laughs> so I made some pretty poor decisions here, you guys, and I am paying for it right now. <laughs> Let's start with the one attack by that uh, archer. He can roll one die for defense, and he gets a crit. Oh my gosh, that saved him. Okay, then he, and I could keep rolling you guys, but it wouldn't do anything for him because he doesn't have any abilities for defense. Uh, then he's going to get attacked for two points of damage, rolling one die, and he gets nothing there. So he just took two points out of his three health <laughs> of damage. And yes, I don't have any healing potions. Uh, you can sometimes find them in the scenario, but that's it. So yeah, he has one health left. Gumbjorn is going to go next, and I think I'm going to have him go over and try and attack those two archers. He'll move for his first action right to here, and his second action, he'll attack these guys. He'll roll four blue dice, and yeah, one, two, I could keep rolling. <laughs> He's going to take out one of the archers, no problem. That moved him up to two XP. Next, we're going to go to Finn. Finn gets plus one on his attack. I think the first thing we'll do with Finn is we're going to have him move into this darkness tile. Now, no matter how much movement you have, when you move into a darkness tile, you have to end your movement. And then you flip the card face up. Okay, this symbol means you'll have an event. We'll go ahead and draw our top event card, and we have a scroll of power. You stumble upon a scroll that appears to be an advertisement for the cult gym. <laughs> this is a one-shot card, so you have to use it during this scenario. You can't take it through the campaign. Gain plus two dice uh, to your next attack. Discard after use. Cool, so we can use it as a one-shot anytime. 
We have a clear shot of this archer. Let's see if we can take that thing out. We get to roll four dice for this attack based on where our initiative is. Come on, two hits. We get one hit. Ah, we don't have anything else. So we did one point of damage to that archer. With that, it's Ibexus' turn. We're going to hammer on this guy. Yeah, we got two damage. We should be able to take him out. Boom. One, two. I could re-roll. It's not going to matter. That'll take him out, and that'll give us our first XP. Next to go is Tank, but I think Tank is going to do his step up, and he's just going to move himself to the top of the track. I should move this down because uh, I want them to be targeting him. And then next, the grunts, but those grunts don't see us, so they don't have, uh, they're not engaged, so they're not going to attack us. And finally, we have that one archer. That one archer, though, is still going to attack the closest hero, and that will be Gunbjorn, even though Tank is higher up on the initiative track. Fortunately, though, the archer has only additional movement, not attack, so he'll only attack for one. You can see that right here. He's definitely the closest, so he'll be attacked. Gumbjorn rolls four dice for defense. Oh, crit, crit, he's good. Tank will start us off for this next round. He has this Winged Helm, which provides him an additional space per movement action. So my initial plan was to have him move one, two, three to come here and attack one of these grunts. Here's the problem. If he does that and defeats one of them, uh, we then will level him up to level two. Great, but then we're going to have to spawn enemies. And we spawn them as close as possible to where he is. And that would be here, right next to Ibexus, who has one... Yes, one health. So I think instead of doing that, we're going to do movement one to move here. Let's reveal this. And we have, oh, a treasure chest. So we get to draw a level one treasure. And holy moly, we found the boulder drop. Now this takes two hands. It rolls five dice. What are they getting all these boulders, Gary the Otter Grunt? <laughs> That's awesome. This is a level one. Yeah, okay, cool. So right now, we have Tank having this. He's going to want to hand this off to Ibexus as soon as he can. His second action then will be to move here and help block so that Ibexus doesn't get hurt. But I don't want him to kill anybody right now. I want other people to take him out so that we can stay at level one. Because if we can all stay at level one when we go down to the next room, I'm only going to spawn level one enemies instead of spawning the level two on the spawn cards. And you can see that's generally harder. Like look at this. This spawn two here has one archer and two casters instead of just one brute. Or one grunt and two casters instead of two archers. So... Yeah, I'm going to try and do that if I can. Next to go will be Gunbjorn. He gets plus one to his attack. <laughs> this poor archer isn't going to know what's going to hit him. He's going to swing for five dice. We're looking for axes here. We just need two. One, two, we get a crit. Nah, it doesn't even matter. Taking him out. He's toast. That gives us a total of three XP. We're one away from leveling up with Gunbjorn. That's the last archer in this encounter. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the archer uh, card, initiative card. We don't need that. Nobody was behind them, so it doesn't even matter. Next is, oh wait, no, Gumbjorn can finish his turn. He's going to move one, two to here. Next to go is Finn. Finn has one free movement, so he's going to move one, two for free, and then he's going to go ahead and take two pot shots at these grunts. He's got Pierce one, so their one defense won't do anything. They each have three health. I need to remember I have a plus one ranged attack reroll due to my holy robes. So I'm rolling three dice. Let's see. Oh, that one went flying off. That's two damage. Ugh. Two. Okay, we'll do a reroll on this one. So we're doing two damage, three. Perfect. We just took one of them out, and that will give us uh, to two XP. Let's do that second attack. So we'll roll three dice. This guy's got three health. Let's take him out. Let's take him out. One, two, boom, three. We even cleaved him. So that'll get us to three XP. And you know what's great? That means no enemies are on the board. See ya. The moment that no enemies are on the board, every character will heal by one. The only one that has any damage is Ibexus. Thank goodness he gets a little bit of a reprieve there. And then we can go ahead and just do free form. That's at least how I play to determine who wants to go where. We all need to get to that uh, that ladder tile. So I'm just going to choose one of us. I'm, I think I'm going to choose Gunbjorn. He has the least amount of items. I'm going to have him move on to that space because if it's a treasure, he could gain it. So I'll have Gunbjorn come over to here. Let's see. Come on. Be a treasure. Be a treasure. No, it's an event. Ooh, hopefully it's a good event. <laughs> We'll grab that top event card, and we have a health potion. You discover a health potion hidden in the darkness. Add a health potion token to your dashboard. Great! You can use those for other characters as well. What they do is they heal half of your health rounded up. So if I used it on Ibexus, it would heal for two. But if I used it on Gumbjorn, his health is five, six, seven, so it would actually heal four. So it all depends upon who you use it, who you use it on. 
I'm then going to go ahead and move everybody onto this tile. I am going to have these two hang out together quick so that they can trade. He wants to give him that awesome boulder uh, spell. So now Ibexus will have that spell. It is going to be in his inventory though because it takes two hands. I like my firebomb and my mind wreck because they have kind of cool abilities. But that one will be awesome to use at some point to just roll five dice and attack with it. So we've now all moved into the ladder space. Let's go ahead and move ourselves down into the sewers. As we moved ourselves down into the sewer, look at this. <laughs> I had to spawn a total of one, two, three, four, five. So there's five spawn points, plus there's two large tiles here. So seven spawn cars, and these are all the enemies we out have out here. The new ones you haven't seen yet are casters. We also have a brute up top that's from the scenario, as well as one brute down here. So we need to defeat all the enemies and get ourselves to there. Okay, and <laughs> you know we're gonna have an XP uh, spawning as well because a bunch of people are one XP away and we're gonna have to kill some enemies. My initiative tracker is way over here and what I did is I shuffled all of the enemies and the heroes together and set them out. We've got Tank on top followed by Gunbjorn, which is great. Then the casters, the archers, Finn, Grunts, Ibexis over there and then we end with the Brute. So you're going to see here we have some water tiles and what those tiles mean is the moment you move into them you have to stop your movement no matter how much movement you have. So if we have our tank move into this spot he cannot move an additional space he'll only be able to move there. I think that's how we're going to start we're going to have him move here but there are archers right here that already had a line of sight on him and a clear shot. So he's now going to have to do a dodge roll. He'll roll his defense, and as long as he gets one defense or one crit symbol, he's okay. Otherwise, he's going to take a point of damage. Fortunately for us, we normally get to roll three defense dice, but we're in the first initiative slot, so we get to roll four. And because of that stabby dagger, we have plus one defense reroll. So we'll roll these up. Great. Look at that. We blocked it. Now, I don't think... Well, actually, I do know this for sure. Remember how we have our ability that whenever we crit on our defense, we do wounds? That's only to close enemies. Those guys are within range two of us. They're not close, so we can't do damage to them even though we did roll a crit on our defense. We're then going to go ahead and attack this archer. Now, because there's a caster in this space, we have minus one to our attack dice. So normally we'd roll three, and we're only going to get to roll two because we're within close range of the caster, and he reduces our attack by one. We'll roll our two dice, and we get two hits, which is perfect. That's just enough to take out an archer, although we are also going to gain our fourth XP. Gaining that fourth XP, it means we're going to have a level two enemy spawn. So this one says 1x. We're only going to draw one card, and it's going to spawn as close as possible to tank. So we're going to spawn three archers. We just took out one, and three are going to take its place. <laughs> now, everyone else will also get a boost of XP. Finn down here will also go to four. But remember, it's only the first time someone goes over there, so we don't have to worry about Finn having to spawn. And I should mention, each of them now have the plus one action. So tank will have one more action after this. Gumbjorn will also go to 4 XP, so he also will have plus 1 action. And Ibexis, who normally I have to slow down on XP because he is a killing machine, is only at 2. <laughs> so I don't know what I've been doing wrong in this playthrough, sorry about that. But he is at 2 XP only, so he still will only have 2 actions. Now you're going to see here, I had to place 3 more archers, but I couldn't place that 3rd one. So instead, I placed the 3rd archer, which by the way, there are 2 different sculpts for the archers and for the grunts. You might see 2 different sculpts. This is the sculpt I like the most, but this is the uh, secondary sculpt as well for the archers. So I placed that additional archer 1 space behind. I think for our final action though, we're going to go ahead and try and hit another archer, because all of these guys ganging up will be attacking me for at least 3 damage. And you know what's great? The archers are in an initiative spot where they get plus one defense, but his attack is pierce. So that actually didn't even matter. So that's great because he can pierce through that one shield. Okay, rolling two dice, looking for two successes to take another archer out. Boom. Great. You know, the nice thing about axes are they are pretty consistent. So that will put him to uh, six XP. And by six, actually, I mean five. Sorry. Gunbjorn is next, and I think it makes sense. He has three actions now, too, because he's leveled up. He's going to move here. He's going to have to do a dodge roll, but then he's also going to attack this group. Right now, he has the plus one attack due to the initiative, so he's only rolling three dice for defense, and he gets a shield, so we're good. Okay, 
Now he's going to attack. I think he's going to attack that caster. He gets two actions. The casters have three health with one armor. They're on the initiative track for plus one movement, I believe. Yep, plus one movement. So there's not going to be anything to help them. And they're the ones that are re reducing our attack rolls. So normally he'd roll four. He's at a plus one because of where he is on the initiative track, but he's at a minus one because that caster is within close range. So he's just going to roll four dice. He's looking for four hits here. He gets one, two, three hits. I don't have any rerolls for him. Nope. So I dealt two damage for that first attack. We're going to get a second attack here. We're going to roll two more, or four more, I guess. And, oh, there's a crit. And, oh, yeah, that's going to be more than enough to take out that caster. That caster will just give us one XP, but the nice thing is now people in that area will not be having their attacks being reduced. Casters are still only worth one XP, so he is also now at five XP. Next to go are the casters. These two casters have one additional movement, but with the FAQ, they've confirmed that they will not move more than they need to to get into range to attack. So they're going to just move to here. That will allow them to attack our tank, who is our highest on the initiative track of these two, and they're going to attack him for two total damage because each of them attacks for one. So they're going to attack the tank for two. Fortunately for our tank, he does roll four dice with one reroll. So he gets a oh, crit for one defense, and he gets to roll one of these for a second one. Ah! All right, so he takes one point of damage. He has six health, so he's doing okay. But like I said, there's not a lot of ways to heal in this game, so <laughs> damage usually stays around. Next to go are the archers, and this is going to hurt Tank a little bit. They're going to attack as a group, and they all have a clear shot of him. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five points of damage coming at him. He's only rolling four dice for defense. But if we get some crits, we can deal damage to these guys. We can deal wounds to them for all those crits that we get. Five damage minus what we roll here. We get one crit. Oh, man, you guys, we're, we're getting hit for four damage, though. And we'll roll that. Oh, good. That's at least two defense. So we take a total of three damage plus the one. That's a total of four damage. Yeah, these are not fun. <laughs> but the one good thing is we'll deal one damage to that archer that's adjacent to us. It looks like we might know who we're going to use that healing potion on. <laughs> Tank. So next to go will be Finn. He gets plus one to his attack. Perfect. He has a clear shot on those two uh, archers that are straight in front of him. As much, though, as I want to attack them, I'm actually thinking because I have three actions with Finn and only two with Ibexus, and I need to get Ibexus' XP up, I'm going to have Finn spend his first action to move here. He's going to have to roll to for defense against these guys for a dodge, but I think it's worth it because then he can spend two actions attacking these guys. Heck, he could even ha hit these guys if he wanted, and then allow Ibexus to take these guys out, which will then get him to level two. Finn's dodge is two dice. Let's see. Oh, we got a crit. Perfect. He didn't take any damage. I think as much as I'd like to take those casters on, I got to get rid of some of these archers because them attacking as a group is brutal, especially for tank. So we're going to roll four dice and crits cause cleave on this one, which is amazing because we can deal damage to the other uh, archers in that location. And we have pierce already because this is a ranged weapon. So we're going to attack the uh, archer that has no damage on it. Remember in the other spot, there's one that has one damage. So we're going to go for the no damage one first. We're rolling four dice for this. And, oh, there's a crit, so we're going to cleave. We've done three damage, and we get to reroll this one. Oh, and I believe, yep, due to our holy robes, we get one range attack reroll. So we'll reroll this one, and I just threw it off the board, so I'll reroll this one. No, bummer. So we did a total of three points of damage. That's going to take out the fully healed one. That will gain us one XP. We'll go to five. And then with this one, we'll cleave and deal a second point of damage to the other archer in that space then i think what we're going to do is just try and take out that archer that's still there so we've got four dice we just need one success there's a crit there's no one else in that location anyways so we're going to take them out that'll push us up to six xp and we've cleared out two of the archers the grunts are next all they have is plus one movement let's see if the grunts can even see us we've got to go from the back and we're going to hit that red one to get there or there, yeah, we can't see them. And this one back here, oh, you know, I actually think, I would say these grunts over here actually can see us. So they're gonna move two spaces, one, two, but this one is not engaged. 
Ibexus is next, so I think I'm going to, with him, attack these two guys. We don't get any, we get plus one defense, that's not helpful for our attack, but we're just going to see if we can take them out. We're going to use our firebomb. We want to do that because AoE gives us a wound on crit. These guys have one armor, so let's see what we can get. We get two points of damage, and I can re-roll due to our ability. Come on. Oh, three points of damage. Well, that will take one of them out. That will gain us one XP. We're at three. Okay, we can do one more attack. Oh, do I do this? No, I think I'm going to go and use my mind rack for the second attack because we get to roll four dice for this one. And we need, we need a total of three hits here with four dice. Come on. Come on. I believe in you. Oh, there's a crit, but all these are misses. Oh, bummer. Come on. Come on. Oh, darn. So we only did one point of damage, and they have armor. But we did confuse him, so he's not going to attack our team this time. He'll just try and attack somebody who's in range. That's an enemy, which right now, he doesn't have anybody that's in range. That's an enemy. Bummer. <laughs> That always seems to be the case whenever I get the confusion. And the big bummer is we didn't level up. The Brutes are last to go, which is going to be fun when they start activating because they get plus one attack. But they can, definitely cannot see us. They're hiding behind darkness tiles. So we're not going to worry about that. We'll move to the next round. We'll move to tank. First thing he's going to do, he's going to take a step back. We need to be careful with him with only having a couple health left. So we're going to push him all the way to the bottom of the track. Uh, which actually will help us. The Well, the Brutes having plus one defense is not great, so we'll need to take care of that soon. But that does mean now Gunbjorn can go first. The first thing he is going to do is he's going to, because he's in the same space as uh, the tank, he's going to use his potion to heal the tank by half of its health, so that will heal him from for three HP. So he's got only one point of damage now on him instead of four. <laughs> Action two, we're going to go ahead and take our step up here, but we are now going to have to do a dodge. And then action three is we're going to attack this archer, who now no longer has the shield, I believe. Yep, they have plus one movement. Fortunately for Gunbjorn, he rolls four dice because of the initiative track. And great, he gets enough shields. Now he is going to attack that archer. He rolls four dice with that hammer. We just need two hits here. Boom, boom, done. Takes out the archer. He now has six XP. Well, this is going to get fun. Next to go are the casters, followed by the archers. The casters get plus one attack, so they're going to attack for four, and you know who they're going to attack, Gunbjorn. You can see here, he is certainly the closest, and of course, he's highest up on the initiative track. At least he rolls four dice for defense. Come on, crits. Come on, crits. Oh, we get two, so we took two points of damage. That's okay. We have five, six, seven. We have seven health. Eh, we're doing pretty good. Oh, you know what, you guys? I forgot about my fortitude. I should get to roll one more die because of his special ability. Two, three, four, plus one. Yep. So we did not get a shield. So we still take two points of damage. This lone archer here, though, that has its eyes set on Finn here, because Ibexus couldn't seem to kill him, <laughs> is going to attack Finn. Because remember, we pushed Tank all the way to the bottom of the initiative track. So Finn is now the closest, and he is higher up on the track. Fortunately, he gets plus one defense because of where he is on, his, on the initiative track. That means he's rolling three dice for defense, so we'll give it a roll, and we've got a shield. We're good to go. Next to go is Finn, and I think he's going to do a step back for his action. So he's going to move himself to the bottom of the initiative track. That's going to give him plus one attack, hence the reason I want to do that. The grunts are going to go next. We already know that these grunts are engaged. How about this one? Is it engaged now? No, it's still not engaged because it's going to have to go through this red tile. So this guy's chilling. These guys are going to move. The grunts I now have plus one shield, so they're just going to move one space they're going to move here. They're slowly plotting their way. <laughs> Next to go is Ibexus. Finally, come on. He gets plus one attack, you guys. He should be able to take this guy out. He's rolling five dice for this. He just needs two successes. Come on. And he only gets one, <laughs> but he gets a reroll. You better give it to me. Yes, there's the two. That will take him out. That will finally give him the one more XP to give him four in total. So he gets plus one action. So he still has two more. He's going to move himself one space right to here, and he is going to attack for his third action on these casters. We're going to do the mine rack again, attacking with five dice. We'll roll that up. That looks pretty good. We got two damage. We can reroll one of these. Come on, crit. No, three damage. They have one armor, so we didn't even take one out. We uh, did two damage to one. Man, we really need to take out enemies to catch up our XP. Ugh. The Brutes go next, but once again, they can't see anyone. Then Tank is going to go, and I 
think we're going to go ahead and do another shift. We're going to push him up to the top of the initiative track because now he only has one damage. And we really want him to get attacked if possible because he has that crit on wound when he uh, defends. So I'm going to push him up to the top of the track. And I'm realizing we defeated the last archer. So I took out the archer initiative card. And so now the final one to go is Finn. Finn can go ahead and try and take out these two casters, but once he does that, I don't want him to take anything out until we get to the next level, because he will be one away from level three. The casters currently have plus one movement, so they only have that one shield. I'm going to go for the one that has two points of damage first. Let's see if I can take him out. That is one point of damage right there, which actually is good. Oh, we've got a range one range reroll. Let's see if we get a crit. No, but this one will still work because they uh, he has pierce as his ability. So that will take out the one caster and that will move him up to eight, uh, seven XP. And then he'll go ahead and attack for his second action, the other caster. And he gets no successes. He can reroll one, nothing. Totally dodge that. Well, let's do our third one. That's maybe not the end of the world. Because like I said, if I if he takes this caster out, he can't take anyone else out. <laughs> His third attack, he gets one point of damage and he'll reroll. That's two. He can do a pierce, so he'll do two out of the three points of damage. But he didn't take him out. Uh, Ibexus, anyone? Come on, Ibexus. 